Hey guys, what's up? It's Nihon Tiger. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Ah! <laughs> so we're back here on the... What day is it today? The 16th of February, I think. And it's been a bit since I've recorded, but I have been working on some designs. And I want to show this off real quick. Uh, just a couple things I've done. So... First off, here's our ship from last time. I still left it on the MUN. Just as kind of a reminder of where we crash landed in that crater. Uh, I've also, just for fun, I also sent a 2R just to see if I could get it out into a solar orbit. And the answer is yes. In fact, it's so good, it's pretty much in Duna orbit. <laughs> and so I have to keep an eye on this and keep uh, keep it eye on it because it does intersect. It looks like it does kind of come close to intersecting the, the orbit of Duna. So we may actually have a a Duna crash landing with this this Wildcat 2. But this guy right here, let's go ahead and zoom back in here. This is our test run for the, the new design that I've made, the Wildcat 3. And let's go ahead and click on here. And there you go. That's our ship. Kind of the same design as the two, but with a little bit different. I'll explain some of the design differences as we get closer. Uh, as you can see, Jebediah is kind of just chilling out there. How you doing, buddy? You doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. I'm going to leave him be for now. And let's go back to the Space Center. Okay. So as far as research and development goes, give you a quick heads up on that. We do have a few more things. I think I've not mentioned this yet, but we do have the uh, press map barometers. So we have this advanced exploration and the fuel systems and heavy rocketry. And our next goal is going to be trying to get the heavier rocketry, I think, because that one has better rockets. Maybe advanced electronics. I don't know. And these are just rubber pieces, so we don't quite need those yet. Um, but we have 35 science left over after our big spending spree. So today, I... Let me go check Astronaut Complex. Now hire Wersky Kerbin. And Lembo. Okay. There you guys go. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to show off spacecraft. So I do have another spacecraft I'm working on. I'm still in the design process of this, but this is our our new deep space explorer called the the Ocelot One. Um, it'll probably be an Ocelot Two because this design is it works, but it doesn't get much past the orbit of Kerbin right now. So I kind of like I kind of like the design, but I need to work more on staging. I probably might have to even asparagus stage just to get it to work right. So we'll check that out later. But more importantly, take a look here at the Wildcat 3. This is our our ship to the stars today. So as you can see, we have basically everything that we've learned from the Wildcat 2, except we've added a few more fuel tanks in here just to give it a little bit more boost to make sure it reaches the, the orbit we need. You see all our science is located up here in our escape pod and that is by design so that we can basically as you can see here we can just detach this at the end of our mission and flip this back down the Kerbin and this is actually this part right up here where these seconds to the lander legs is that's actually our lander um, it's kind of weird but that is the lander itself and we have our ladder which will be very useful let me get to the MUN and I've added, it's not quite super symmetrical, I've added another fuel tank down here just to give it a little bit more extra fuel. Because the last time I ran this, um, I ran a test run on this, I tweeted about it, but I barely made it back to, to Kerbin on fuel. Let's just say that I got lucky and I, I cut it way too close. So, for everyone who's watching... Bill Kerman is our pilot because Jebediah is in space. 
So let's throttle up and we will begin this in three, two, one, and off to the run. All right, so fairly stable, fairly uniform. I like the fact that it's just basically going straight up. So we're accelerating at a pretty rapid pace. Begin to slowly throttle it down, save a little bit of fuel. Little trick, you don't really need to go too far to get out of Kerbin's grasp. So let's go down a little bit more. See it kind of stops, so it kind of flutters there for a second as I slowly power it down. There we go. And now I'm going to want to power back up because we're running out of fuel on the solid boosters. So we're going to be only going pretty fast. And there we go. Break those. And we can slowly, I think we can slowly start to begin our turn. About 8,000, yeah. Let's start to begin the turn. And our turn toward orbit. There we go. Now we're fighting gravity. Alright. So how's our fuel doing? Quite a bit of fuel left. We are at half tank on all these main ones. So let's get a little bit more. Move toward the 90. There. Take a look at orbit. See how we're doing. Okay, we're doing all right. Begin to call off the dogs a little bit. Getting higher into the atmosphere, so we need less force to move. About 48 seconds. We may can back it down a little bit more. So I've been watching uh, Scott Manley's videos. He says it's probably good practice to have about a minute ahead on your Apple Apsis. So. Back this down. Okay, now we're in orbit. So we really don't need a whole lot. Alright, we'll add a maneuver here. And that's just going to be our, our nice clean burn. Whoop. Let's move this up. Oh, let's go down. Let's just stop. Um, let's just stop it for the moment. And we're going to have to burn a little early because we are short on speed. We're short on fuel as well. So we're going to need to burn a little early here. Right now. And stop. Right on the spot. Good. So we're going to burn out this engine. There we go. This guy will kind of nose up a little bit here. We need to. So we are going to need to nose up a little bit. I'm just going to put us in a slightly larger orbit because we want to keep that apoapsis ahead of us. Fuel. We're doing okay on fuel. Um. There we go. Getting closer. I gotta get about 23, 24,000, I think, is what we gotta get to. Let's just keep that in the circle. Alright, getting close, getting close. Actually no, we can uh, back it down a little bit. So let's go ahead and 45,000, okay. Let's 
All right, so I think that's good. We're just outside the orbit of the, the test uh, rocket that we had. So Jeremiah, was, uh, he's floating by. We're going to say hi to him. And now, now that we're in orbit, how is our fuel doing situation? We have more than half a tank. That's excellent. Let's set the Mun as our target. Next goal. And we want to... How's our ascending node? Very good. Let's add a maneuver here. Just, just, for, just for the sake of adding a maneuver, let's add a maneuver here. And we will... Go ahead. We want to burn outward. Okay, so... It's not where we want to do. Okay, so... We'll burn a little bit past, and there's our there's our encounter right there. Okay, cool. So we can do it right here, actually, at the periapsis when we're going fastest, and only require a little bit more delta V than normal. Um, so yeah, that's actually probably our best bet is like right here. When we get to kind of almost at the descending node, it's actually probably the best time to burn. We'll have a very long three hour Mun encounter, so we'll have a have plenty of time to go ahead and get ourselves into shape. So we're also gonna go ahead and we have our burn in twenty five minutes. Oh, 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 careful now, careful now. So we're good on fuel, we're good on electric charge, and we're good on all of that other stuff. And Bill, Bill is happy, he's happy. Very happy. And I'm very happy you're here, Bill. Let's observe our mystery goo. Nah, we're gonna save that. We're gonna save all the science stuff for when we actually get to the Mun. That's our goal today. So keep that pointed. Stop. All right, there we go. We are pointed and ready and quick saving because quick saving is a good thing to do. Good, good advice for those of you that play Kerbal Space Program. Quick save all the time because you never know when something could go wrong. Okay, so just to kind of describe the the Wildcat Three. This is kind of this part right here. These two segments, this um, little tank, and then the engine here is kind of our burn to get to the Mun. And then our lander is actually everything after this uh, this separator right here. So this is an engine. We have these struts. These are la actually the landing struts for the Mun. So I've kind of figured out how to do it without using RCS. It's a little more difficult, but it's. A little bit of, I got a little bit of practice in, so hopefully I can do this right this time. Um, our battery packs and our solar arrays are here, and then all our science stuff is above this separator right here. You can see there's the temperatures and the barometer pressure and our dish. Why don't we do a crew report? Oh, it's kind of blocking the way. Uh, crew reports. Nope. No use to us, so I think we've got all that. Um, but there's our command pod, our parachute, and then this second set of legs, which will also extend when we hit the when we hit our legs. Um, it'll look kind of weird. And we'll, so we put our gear down. A little loud there. Thank you, thank you, game. Um, but this second set of legs right here will kind of descend downward. It'll look funky, but. These are actually our landing legs for when we get back into curve in orbit so that we can land and keep our science stuff intact because one of the things I've noticed, and I've noticed this a lot, is that even at slow speeds, if you hit the, the surface with your science, there's a chance it could explode and just disappear completely and you lose a lot of stuff. So I know some people say, oh, we just crash into the water. I've had it happen in the water too, but... Uh, I don't want to have to go around and have to fish up all these pieces. So this basically is a way for me to keep it intact. And it work, this, work, this works in the water too. Actually, the legs will kind of stabilize, take some of the, the initial impact, and they'll float pretty well. So when we get a little closer to the time of our burn, I will 
be right back and we'll have a little bit of fun and hopefully get to the moon. And I made a rhyme. Hooray! All right, so we're back. We're at T minus three minutes to renewed burn. I have kind of uh, figured things out a little better. So we actually have a, a lesser burn of 79.2 meters per second instead of the 810. So that will save us a bit of fuel. And Bill, Bill is happy. He is very, very happy to be here in space with all of you. And we can do the burn, I think, from here if we want to. Okay, so this is a quick test to see how much we'd have to burn. I think it's about, I think I saw a flash about 40 seconds. So we may want to start around 30 seconds to get the optimum optimum burn out of this. We are accelerating too, so that will help because we're getting closer to our periopsis. So as we get closer, we'll accelerate. And ideally, the best time to do it would be exactly at the periapsis because we would be going our fastest, so we'd have burn less delta V, but I can't quite get the same, just with the orbit of the MUN, I can't quite get the same amount of time. I don't have that three hour gap if I do that. It's more like about two and a half. Which isn't which isn't a whole lot of time, but you know, it's not a whole lot of time in the grand scheme of things, but the more time I have, the better the better I feel. So let's go ahead and we'll quick save again real quick, just since we're within a minute and thirty seconds of launch time, and you can notice as well our our Altitude is decreasing. We are getting toward the low end of our orbit and will decrease down to 53,300 at the lowest. And that est estimated burn time is, is incorrect. It's not, it's not right. It's not eight seconds. It's more like 40. So you go ahead. Yep, it's about. It's about 46. Okay, so this is good. We can actually start burning now. A little bit. Get this to line up just right. Good on fuel. Feeling in nice, feeling in nice, doing go, 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 go. Yes. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow it down a lot. Oh, careful. I think we are, I think we are on our way. A little bit, a little bit off, but yeah, I think we're on our way. So we have about a three-hour window, and we only get one shot at this. It looks like. So yeah, we've got about. That's bizarre. Um, we're going fast enough. Careful, slow down, slow down now, slow down. Okay. Okay, so that was weird. Um, in fact, because we didn't... I don't know if it was because we didn't burn in our periapsis or what, but we ended up... Our orbit changed on us for some reason. I think it was because of gravity trying to pull... Kind of tug, tug at us. So we have... We have a two hour window instead, it looks like, instead of just a three hour window. So that's a little weird, but we'll be fine. So when we get a little closer to, we get a little closer to the MUN, we will go ahead and burn. So we have four hours left. Um, I will update you a little bit. 
you know, when we get a little bit closer, we have a good amount of fuel. We think we're good on fuel for the moment. Let's check. The tank's empty. The tank's almost empty. The tank is full, so we've got 175 units. I think that'll be good. This should be enough to get us into orbit. So I will see you guys in a little bit when we get a little bit closer to the Mun. Welcome back to the continuing adventures of Bill Kerman, Lost in Space. And there's the, there's the Mun again. And here's our Wildcat 3. Now we are very quickly approaching our Mun encounter. We have about four minutes to go. So we'll get a new orbit after this. I don't know what it will be. It will probably be radically different. I, I actually expect it will pull us back this way. So we'll have to kind of first slow ourselves down and then obviously circularize our orbit. That's a that's a big deal. So go ahead here and just fast forward a little bit. Not too fast. Because we want to make sure that once we have our encounter we can go ahead and make a quick change to our... So we're gonna hit it in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and I expect it will be pulled backwards. Yep, okay, cool. That's what I thought. Alright, so we are going very fast though, that's the only problem. And... What is the... Okay, there's our periapsis, so we're gonna have to do double burn real quick here. We're gonna have to do two burns. And one burn is going to be to slow ourselves down to get a periapsis. And the other burn is going to be to pull ourselves into a concentric orbit. And that's actually not a bad periapsis. 26,000 is not too terrible. Um, should have put a reaction wheel on this big boy. Well, the good news is, since we're so far out, we won't have to do a whole lot as far as gravity goes. So we're gonna burn, yeah we're gonna burn retrograde as you can see. Slow, 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 slow. Whoa, you overshot it. You overshot it. Stop spinning. Stop spinning. So I wish I had, a, maybe I do wish I had RCS now. This thing is such a pain in the ass now to steer manually. RCS would really, would have really helped, yeah. I do regret that, but lesson learned. Listen, learn. We do have RCS on the on the Ocelot series. Looks like. Um. So. It's not a long burn. It's only gonna be about twenty seconds, I think. It's not gonna take much. We're not going very fast, anyways. So when I'm we're gonna burn here, and when we get a little bit closer, we're gonna want to burn closer to our periapsis as well to kind of draw this back around. And the reason we're going to burn close to our periapsis is if we burn close to the periapsis, um, it will not move this as much as it would if we burned from the apoapsis because that will just move it really far in. It's a huge change in speed. Um, so the closer we get to our periapsis to burn, the less change in speed we have to deal with. And we have a 17 second burn here. Full blast, we are pulling back in, around, starting to pull in, slow it down a little bit, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down, perfect, 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 um, a little bit more, oh, that's fine, I think that'll work, I think that'll work quite well, um, okay, so now when we get to our periapsis, we don't have a complete loop. Um, so let's F5 that. That's the next, the next step is we don't have a complete orbit around the, around the MUN. So we're going to need to go ahead and set that up. And to do that, we're going to add a maneuver here. There we go. We already have an apoapsis. So let's pull her in nice and tight. 249 is a little too far out. 89. Um, I think for our purposes that will work. 
see if we can't do a little bit more. 76. Yeah, 55. That'll be fine. And you can see here our periapsis change isn't much um, at all when we burn from this point. And we're burning almost right at the periapsis. So the change is going to be minimal. And we do have a little bit of a wait here. We have four hours in orbit. So when we get a little bit closer, I'm going to go ahead and actually go ahead and position myself now for the burn. And we're a little low on fuel. So this may be, this should be actually our last major burn to get into descent. And then we have one more burn, but we can probably use the lander for that. I think we'll see, we'll see how much fuel is left over, how much of a burn I have to make here. If it's not much, we may be able to get a final burn in descending to the Mun's surface. So that would be really cool. It would be cool if we could make that really efficient. But I know when I landed my ship, I was landing on the the, uh, the rocket I was using here for my lander. And we still have a ton of fuel left for that. And we don't need a whole lot because the surface of the Mun is very low gravity. So not quite as much as Minmus, but I think we can do this. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with hopefully an insertion burn coming up and an actual landing on the Mun probably on the light side because it's going to be a lot easier. So be right back. <laughs> 